Hello, brothers and sisters in YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. Thank you so much for your patience and prayers. I'm in much need of them. I know it's been a while since I put up a message. It has been such a busy week here in the community for me and such a trial with me and Jesus. Hopefully, we'll have a message about that soon. However, as we continue on the series about discernment, it's important to be able to discern God's voice. And I think that is the greatest desire many seek whether they're Christians or not. I once heard Google say that how to hear God's voice was the number one constant search for a while. The beautiful thing about a Christian's life is that you don't have to go anywhere to find God. But when you give your life to Jesus, he makes his dwelling within you. So the voice of God speaks to your heart. John 14, 23, Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. Jesus can speak in different variations, with images, with senses, with infused knowledge, with ideas, inspirations, with words. It all comes down to intimacy, my dear ones. It's just like any relationship. You have to work at it, practice at it. As the scripture says concerning discernment, Hebrew 5, 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. To be able to discern God's voice, you must know him. So how can one get to know God? By spending time with him in prayer, learning about his ways and his word, which will give you an idea of his character for you to better discern when you hear something, if it's actually from him. In my first year walk with the Lord, I desperately wanted to hear his voice like my cousin, who is the one who led me into a life of surrender with him. She had such an intimacy with him that I was so jealous for. I would whine and complain as I would ask her, why is he not talking to me? Then one day she sent me a meme with a guy speaking to God, saying, talk to me. And then a giant hand from heaven reaches down with the Bible to him. I thought, really, Lord? Funny. I know I should read the Bible, but honestly, I didn't want to. I wanted to hear from him. So let's stop right there. I was just reading an adoration statement from one of the holy books, which I think is applicable here. And it says, I'm paraphrasing, Theology or the scriptures should lead you into communion with God and a service of love. But theology without that is a monster that even separates people from him. There are many souls who have not read the Bible, but walk in deep intimacy with the Lord. And many who know the Bible from cover to cover, but have no intimacy whatsoever. However, in these teachings, we're not just covering how to hear God's voice, but discernment. That is necessary to discern if what you're hearing, the instructions, the visions, and directions you're getting are from him. You must know his heart. At that time when my cousin sent me that image, she also encouraged me to read his word. So with the Holy Spirit, I went to the Gospels and began to have an understanding of the directions and dreams and thoughts I had in prayer, realizing they were from God. He was speaking to me the whole time, but I didn't know it. I did a video in my earlier years about the many ways God speaks to you, and I'll have that in the description. However, as heart dwellers, I know you all desire to have intimate communion with God, conversing with him, and he has made that grace available for all his brides who to come. The Lord has taught us how to begin hearing from him, is simply writing down and pray what you hear, or as I've told so many, what you think you hear, then go back and discern later. The enemy will love for you to stop even before you get started. Many don't journal or write. But guys, that is the best way to hear his voice, and better yet, to really learn discernment. In prayer, you'll get ideas, thoughts, inspirations. Many times when the Lord speaks to me, it comes as random thoughts to my mind. And other times, I have to sit and wait on him after prayer and ask him what's on his heart. Then write down what I'm sensing he's wanted to say in my own words. The enemy hits many with doubt and unbelief. The enemy hits many with doubt and unbelief. With the accusation that you're talking to yourself, making up images and ideas in your mind, these thoughts would definitely come up. But how does one discern from your voice, the enemy's voice, and God's voice? 
The last two messages I mentioned I had to take down weren't from the enemy, but was the thoughts of my own flesh after I discerned the message, so I didn't put it up. Failing or stumbling in discerning God's voice shouldn't stop you, because it is inevitable that will happen. How else will you learn and practice hearing Him if you don't make the mistakes? You see, God uses everything. If it wasn't for my many, many, many failures, then I wouldn't have learned how to discern my voice from His voice from the enemy's voice. So please don't let fear stop you. That definitely is a tactic of the enemy. The demons hate a soul who's intimate with God. They will do everything in their power to stop a soul from intimacy. Furthermore, we must remember God's character, heart, and nature when discerning His voice. God's voice will leave you with peace, not anxiety, fear, worry, hopelessness, or discouragement. As it says in John 14, 27, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. God's voice will give you wisdom, counsel, and instructions that will lead you closer to Him and love of your neighbor. John 13, 34 A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. So any other counsel or instructions you receive in prayer that doesn't lead you to a service of love, forgiving, letting go, trusting God, is not his voice. For example, a friend of mine was hurt by rejection when another Christian told them that Jesus said to them to not talk to her anymore. That's not the nature of God. His voice would rather say, I want you to be careful in sharing your heart with this person. Love them, but don't entrust your heart to them. God's voice is not demanding of its own way, but allows you to reason with him. Then will give you his perspective or his will for you to make a decision. Although Jesus may demand different degrees of surrender from different souls, in Isaiah one eighteen, he says, Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Love does not demand its own way. Although God, he loves to reason, to talk with us, to hear our opinions, our hearts, Jesus always gives us a choice because of free will. So when you hear him, he may tell you things he doesn't like, things he would prefer you to do, things he may ask of you, but never will he demand it. He tells you then will lovely wait for you to make the decision in hopes you make the right decision. If you're hearing a voice that's very demanding and tell me that you have to do this, you have to do that, you can't do this or you can't do that, it's not the Lord and can be a religious spirit or a lying spirit who wants to control you. Jesus is not controlling. God's voice is loving and at times will correct you. But in love, not condemning or accusatory. Proverbs 3.12 For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. He wouldn't be a loving father if he didn't correct you. And the fact that he corrects you is because you are his delight. <laughs> so it's important for us not to fear correction when we're trying to discern God's voice. That is the way he teaches us and leads us. However, lying spirits abound, and so many are under heavy condemnation. As the enemy's voice tells so many, myself included, when we fail, to just give up. That God's not pleased. That you have to try harder. He is disappointed with you. Thoughts like, you're so stupid. You can never do this. God is just too demanding. Live your life a little. Give up. You will never be perfect for his love. He can't love a sinner like you. God is disgusted with you. What's the point? You're too far gone to be saved. Lies, lies, lies from the pits of hell. That's not the Father's voice. God's voice is encouraging, refreshing, but will not puff you up in pride. Proverbs 27, 2. Let someone else praise you, not your own mouth, an outsider, and not your own lips. So you must be careful when you're discerning hearing his voice that the words you're hearing don't puff you up in vainglory in any way. That is the reason I had to delete one of the messages I discerned were from my flesh and not the Lord, because it puffed me up. In my heart, I was angry and hurting, and that came out in what I was hearing, something to soothe my ears, to justify my actions, and to exalt myself above those who hurt me.
God's voice will not lead you into curiosity or knowledge, but to charity. 1 Corinthians 8.1 But knowledge puffs up, while charity edifies. There are many scrupulous and compulsive spirits sent out in our day to cause so many to follow rabbit trails, conspiracies, and rabbit holes. The Lord's voice will not lead you into looking for more higher knowledge or divine knowledge or secret ancient mysteries. No, that's a demon. He leads you to his heart and will lead you to love, charity. If you get wrapped up in doctrines, new revelations, even consumed with end times news and supernatural things, which always start out innocent at first, but the devils know how to ensnare you because of your curiosity and lead you into deception. The Lord's voice will always lead you to lower yourself and seek the service of others more than any knowledge you desire to seek. God's voice will not judge others, and if he does bring up a fault in another, be sure his voice will bring up your faults first. I know that too well by experience. Matthew 7, 1-3 Judge not that you be not judged, for the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? If you're hearing a voice telling you that you're right and others are always wrong, or judgments on people's motives or negative assumptions, that is not the Lord. For example, the reason they don't do that is because they're jealous of you. Don't help them. They always want to use you. They're so lazy and slow. You can do better. This person's so selfish. All they think about is themselves. This person has a demonic spirit. They need to be delivered. These thoughts and suggestions are not from the Lord. It's important to examine your heart when trying to hear from the Lord. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3, You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? How is your heart in prayer? If you're full of bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, anger, frustration, rejection, even that will come out in what you're hearing. It is the pure in heart that will see and hear God when you want his will and to hear his words alone. That's always a sure sign, guys, when you go back to read a message or discern some instructions you heard in prayer and you hear a hint of judgment against another or even yourself. Or if you have strong attachments to idea, a desire, a time frame, then it's important to discern so you're not hearing what you want to hear but what God is saying. The following video, I'll be sharing Mother Claire's message on discerning the three voices in prayer, where she gives three great examples on how to discern which voice belongs to which source. I hope this series will bless you. God bless you guys until the next message.